Hello, my name is Tony Chan from Telecom TV. I'm here at the Open Stack Summit in uh, Sydney, Australia. Uh, with me today is Mark Shuttleworth, CEO and founder of Ubuntu. Mark, welcome to the Telecom TV. Tony, thank you. Can you talk a little bit about what your company is involved in in OpenStack and perhaps specifically addressing the telecoms market? Sure. Uh, so Canonical is the company and Ubuntu is the operating system. It's a Linux, just like Red Hat. Uh, and in fact, Ubuntu is the Linux that most of the telcos are using for their OpenStack infrastructure build-outs. So we're a, a scale-out, cloud-oriented Linux um, uh, used by AT&T, Verizon, Deutsche Telekom, NTT, and many other lighthouse telcos to build um, a, a, a scalable infrastructure for software-defined networking and other capabilities. So what are the principal benefits for operators as you see it when they are deploying something like Ubuntu or OpenStack? Well, in moving to uh, NFV, the telcos are really looking for access to a faster pace of innovation. Um, the world is moving faster, their competitors are moving faster, and their competitors are largely driven by software engineering uh, and, and, and software-driven innovation. Uh, Ubuntu is famous for being the Linux that developers like to use. So by using Ubuntu, telcos are effectively getting access to a deeper pool of talent, the sort of talent that Silicon Valley would look to to create next generation services. And so across the, the spectrum from IoT through edge computing all the way to core networking infrastructure, Ubuntu is emerging as a, as a Linux platform that gives you access to a lot more talent and a lot more innovation effectively. So what are some of the specific use cases that you see being deployed by operators and with particular you know, details on kind of return on investment on, sure. on their... Sure. Um, so we've seen uh, clearly a lot of uh, NFV oriented work starting with the larger, more sort of central functions. Uh, alongside that, I'd say we've seen people moving to more agile operations for things like uh, transcoding and media streaming. Um, uh, even though that's a fairly traditional um, workload, there are lots of efficiencies to be gained by operating that workload in more efficient ways. The current focus, I'd say, is around uh, micro clouds at the edge, so creating a, a cloud-oriented operations framework, but with much smaller clouds that are regionally distributed, distributed out to the colo or um, to customer premises. And then the next wave really is, is devices and IoT, things like software-defined radio for the next generation of 5G towers, um, or uh, even software-defined um, uh, IoT in sort of automobiles and uh, um, CPE. So a lot of what you're describing is, I think, being termed, or grouped under this umbrella term called multi-access edge computing. Uh, how does your solution actually enable that? And do you have to optimize, uh, have you optimized a version for, let's say, that particular architecture? Yes, well, there are a couple of things that we focus on. We focus on the stream of, uh, or managing the stream of change. In a software-defined world, um, you have both risks and opportunities associated with changing the software. In the physical world, you know, every couple of years, maybe every five, seven years, you would replace all of your physical boxes. But in the software-defined world, you're essentially changing the software on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, both for new opportunities and to address risks, security failures or, or problems. And so what we focus on is essentially enabling people to move at the speed of software. And there are a whole range of things that we do in the operating system to make it easier to essentially have millions of devices that you're operating and, and changing every day and to do that reliably and securely. And uh, how is OpenStack and its community involved in, in this transition? I mean, are you working with them or is, is it more internal upgrade for you guys? We're, we're a founding member of OpenStack. We're a, one, of the, one of the initial platinum board members. We um, uh, are the operating system effectively that most people use to deploy OpenStack. So we're very central to the OpenStack project. At the same time, um, our focus isn't um, uh, trying to drive OpenStack to be different from what the community wants it to be. Our focus is on the operations of OpenStack itself and making OpenStack easy to deploy, easy to operate, and ultimately cost effective as a piece of infrastructure. 
um, economics are important at scale, and so our, our focus is on making all of that complexity easy and cost-effective to operate. Okay, uh, we heard from uh, one speaker this morning that one of the requirements that he envisions for next generation OpenStack is actually something called seamless and hitless upgrades. And he demonstrated that on stage as, as a case study. Uh, obviously he worked, his team worked pretty hard to enable that. Is this something that you see will hit the mass market anytime soon? So seamless upgrades are actually a capability in OpenStack, in our OpenStack today. And I think the use of containers is making that easier and easier for other people to achieve that as well. I think it's, a, it's, it's exactly the right sort of thing to be doing. It's not a particularly new capability. It's, it's built into the canonical OpenStack um, operations regime. Um, uh, having said that, I think um, we're, seeing, we're seeing a transformation of the way people think about infrastructure because of containers. And the, the demo that was done this morning is really showing what's possible when you start to combine container-based operations and thinking with the traditional infrastructure that OpenStack leads so well. Okay, um, moving on, uh, let's talk about 5G because that seems to be literally around the corner. I think the standard's gonna be finalized, or a version of the standard will be finalized next month. Uh, how's your approach to 5G? We're mostly helping people with the infrastructure for 5G, in particular, you know, the real opportunity for 5G is to have application offload, so from your mobile device or from the internet device to a small cloud which is very close by in latency terms. This enables whole new classes of application in augmented reality or virtual reality. Um, and so we're very excited to be working with both software vendors and hardware vendors to create that um, framework for uh, 5G killer applications. Um, it's really important to the, to the telcos, not just that they essentially move data around through 5G, but that they're actually able to offer application services and application capabilities. And so we're helping them create infrastructure to, to, to do that. On a technology level, um, do you see any um, roadmap, or can you review your roadmap in terms of adopting the, the operating system for future architectures like 5G? Sure, I think there are, there, there are two areas where 5G will be material for us. One is in um, what I would call micro clouds, so small clouds, uh, anything between two and 20 nodes effectively. Those will become very prevalent in the 5G world because you, you want to have compute capacity you know, very close to the end user. And on the other side, you know, if you look at the devices, the devices that will be streaming data or, or, or um, participating in the, um, uh, the 5G world, they have a need to be you know, secure, updated, managed, all of those sorts of things. And those will be a key focus for us as well. So a lot of, a lot of things in our roadmap are associated with enabling people to build that next generation of devices. Great, thank you very much, Mark. Tony, it was a pleasure.